Howdy again, it's Tubal Kane. Today I wanted to give you a little lesson on my Logan lathe on uh, taper turning. And uh, we'll do just that in a minute and we'll turn a little bit of a taper on uh, a piece of aluminum here. But uh, first of all, a little uh, breakdown on uh, how to turn tapers and the different methods. I wish I had a blackboard like my buddy Glenn Beck, but I'll have to settle for a piece of cardboard. There's three methods of uh, turning a taper on a home lathe. Now, if you got uh, numerical control, of course, there's, uh, it's all going to be automatic. But number one is the offset tailstock method. Number two is the taper attached attachment method. And finally is number three, the compound rest method. And that's the method that I'm going to use today. It's the easiest to do and it doesn't require any special setup or any special equipment. I'm not a big fan of the tailstock offset method and I'm going to give you a couple of reasons here. Uh, number one is that uh, we have to then, here's the index or witness marks on the end of the tailstock, we have to uh, uh, offset that and of course we do that with a screw on either side and then we disturb uh, the setting that we had on it, which hopefully had been indicated and zeroed out, which you'll see in one of my other videos. So uh, I, I don't like to do that. And, and one of the other uh, reasons is that, uh, well, you also have to do some calculation because, you know, a taper can be determined two ways. One is in degrees, and the other is in inches of taper per foot. And that's the way that uh, we... Uh, Morse tapers are uh, indicated, but uh, so you you have to determine uh, how much to offset it, and that's not a method I use, and I'm not going to really tell you anything about it. But I I think it's something to be avoided. But uh, one uh, the nice thing is you can turn your taper between centers. Now uh, a bad thing here I, I made up a paper center, and uh, this is the work piece here, but. When you offset them, uh, this is what your center is doing, the way it rides in the center hole. It is no longer uh, giving you a good fit. And sometimes as you turn, the uh, center hole gets wallowed out and the work may loosen up and that's going to happen on both ends. So to me that seems like a crazy way to do it anyway. But you know, some of you may be fans of that. but. Uh, I'm not. So really that's all I'm going to say on uh, the offset tailstock method. Now the second method of taper turning is the taper attachment, sometimes called a telescoping taper attachment. And that's a rather expensive attachment and you might not see it very often on uh, lathes that you would see in the home. And it's an attachment that goes back here. You can look that up in a book. If you do have one you know what I'm talking about. but. Uh, in essence, what you're doing with a taper attachment is you're tracing the taper. You've turned your lathe into a tracer. And there's uh, two ways to set that, uh, that up. And one is uh, degrees. It'll, uh, it'll probably be indicated in degrees on one end of the taper attachment and in uh, inches per foot on the other. It's also a nice method because you really can do your taper turning uh, on... Uh, between centers or in the chuck, whichever you want. And the length of the taper is going to be determined by the length of your attachment. The bigger the lathe, probably the bigger that attachment is going to be. So uh, sometimes those attachments cost as much as the entire lathe, used lathe does. So if you have one of those, why well, go ahead and read about it in your South Bend book. The method that we're going to demonstrate or consider next is the compound rest method of taper turning. And I think it's by far the easiest one uh, to uh, perform on a lathe. This of course is your compound rest. And I've got this loosened up now, but you can set this at any degree that you want very quickly. And generally I turn my tapers on uh, this side of the zero mark, which you're going to see down here. Sometimes there's an index mark on uh, two or three sides. This Logan only has it on one side, so sometimes you have to scribe yourself a new uh, mark on there. But we're going to put uh, a 10 degree taper on this uh, aluminum, and I've already started to turn that. 
but uh, we're going to then set this on 10 degrees. I'm going to try to get this. Uh, that's that would be about zero, and then when I turn the camera off, I'll set that for zero, and I'll lock the two nuts that uh, will uh, uh, lock the compound. Now the, back the compound way, screw way out, and uh, so that we have plenty of travel. One disadvantage of this method is that it's limited in the uh, length of the taper because usually you got about two and a half, uh, less than three inches of travel of your compound altogether. Now when you actually start to turn, you will need to lock your carriage. Otherwise, according to Newton's law, your carriage might get pushed back a little bit. Then you're going to end up with a little bit of a step on there. This is also a method that you can use to turn your centers. If you've got a center that is not made of high-speed steel, it's just car We're all ready to turn a taper on the end of this 7 8 diameter piece of aluminum. I've got a compound set for 10 degrees. I've backed the compound off all the way this way so I'll have full travel, although I won't need a whole lot of travel. I'm only going to do about an inch and a quarter of uh, taper here. I have locked the carriage and all of our feeding is going to be done with the compound rest not with the carriage feed and our in feed of course will be done with the cross feed and we're ready to go turn the machine on and we'll feed in a little bit I'm feeding with the compound it's a right hand turning tool that I have in there Back it off with the second cut. I'm not turning to any particular length here. This is just a demonstration. Cutting a little bit on the back because that, that just means that the work's flexing a little bit. I'm going to take a finishing cut, just feed it in about uh, five thousandths or so with the cross feed. And I'm going to turn in very slowly. This would be a method that you could also use to uh, re-sharpen your 60 degree lay centers using a carbide tool, setting this uh, for 30 degrees which is half of 60 and uh, if the center is not made of high speed steel if it's just a carbon steel center you're going to be able to do that probably with some success this is also the method that you will use for uh, uh, with a tool post grinder to grind your centers and I might do that in one of my videos we just mount the tool post grinder here instead of the tool post and uh, feed it and we can true up our 60 degree centers. Hope this was helpful to you. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Lyle. I decided to take one more cut from this vantage point in case it's helpful. Even though I already said goodbye. This is the point of view of the operator. I got to hold the camera with one hand and turn the crank with the other. And there we go, and I'll say so long for now again.